Hi guys, I hope you're good since last video. So in this video, we're gonna see something very special. We're gonna be able to use Rust defined functions in a Python, in a Python script as a module. And that's what we're gonna see here. So I've created a playlist to learn Rust. I learned Rust just to be able to understand what I'm doing here while I'm using Rust functions in my Python script for performance improvement. Here we are going to go through different steps in order to understand how is the folder structure and also how you are going to create those config files to be able to use Rust functions defined into your Python script. Please like and subscribe. So let's get started with that. Create a virtual environment. So you're going to create your Python virtual environment. Python 3 MVM. You create the name of your virtual environment. This is very important. So here I've created Rust in Python Venv. That's my. Uh, that's the name of my virtual environment. And after you're going to activate it, you're going to source it. So all the different installs that you're going to do after that using Python are going to be in that environment. So you'll be able to create a requirement file also. So source bin activate. This is done. That's for the first step. Now. Install maturing. Let's install Rust. So this is to show you the command to install Rust. You can find it online. And after here, you just press enter to just get the default settings while, in, while installing Rust. So normally it's going to be uh, doing everything for you, even the path. So we're using uh, Linux. We don't use uh, Windows. So if it is for Windows, just check the documentation. And here it's going to be able to recognize the system and put the pass at the right at the right uh, position and now we're going to be starting downloading Let's proceed with standard installation just press enter so the option number one we, ju we just pressed enter Not gonna fast forward any part of the video. Just gonna wait a few seconds till uh, the installation is done. So we got cargo, RSC, RS format, Clippy, RS docs, RS standard library. I'm just uh, running, it, running it again because I have a Rust already installed in the computer. It's just for you to see the steps one by one so you can follow along this video and do the same. Okay, now we arrive to the end. So it's giving us more instructions, where to put the path, etc. So we install Maturing and we're going to create the project. So now I'm going to zoom in this. So Maturing, New, Binding, Pio3, MyRest, Extension. So you pip install maturing and after you do the new bindings 
by 3 my Rust extension. Doesn't work because I haven't installed it, so pip install. Maturin. It's gonna be quick to install. So this is done. Now we can call the command to create the project. Maturing a new project. We bind in the Pio3 module. That's the one that is gonna be able to link Rust code to the Python script. And my Rust extension, that's the name of uh, the project, has been created. We have a nice emoji for that. That's what we have in. I'm just going to show you the folder. Three. So I'm going to go in first. We have a cargo tunnel, pipe project, the tunnel and source. What is good is that you're going to get some boilerplate code, some boilerplate configurations. Here we have cargo. That's the name of the project. Season 1, the library, my REST extension. That's the one we have created. And the Pio3 is the dependency that we're using. And the Pi project. This is an important configuration file where we are going to add some lines. Build step project and the tool maturing. And we're going to be now changing some stuff in those uh, configurations. So we install Pio3. This is for the Rust side. We add the Pio3 dependency with the future extension module okay cargo add pio3 features extension module so now we go into the cargo.terminal and you can see uh, that pio3 has been updated with the extension as we wanted extension module that's why we we use the cargo add feature has been updated. Now we update the Pi project tunnel. This is manual update. So we've been using commands just to make it uh, easy. Have those boiler plates. Uh, make sure that uh, the cargo .tml for us has the extension module of Pi3. Now here in the Pi project .tml, we're gonna add a version. So. You just add the version manually, you just decide what the version is. A description. Okay. Any description is fine. A Python module implemented in Rust. Or I can say maybe the contrary. Python module a Rust maybe module implemented in Python. That's what we're gonna do. You can do also the other way around. So using Python code in Rust, but uh, find it more interesting using Rust modules in the Python code. Those classifiers, this been they've they've been inter installed in the in the um, boilerplate. We just leave them as they are. There is a version here already, dynamic version in the boilerplate. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. Just gonna just check uh, take the version of the build. And here the author is credit isn't space we can put an email address so credit isn't uh, ai at metaverse.com so that's a fake email just put uh, something here 
So here we have features already, Pio3 extension module. So it's more important to have it in the cargo.toml. Mm, I'm gonna leave it here as it is. But here you need to add the bindings. Pio3. I might need to comment a bit on that. So here I have updated and added just to show which lines are not part of the border plate. This one also I have updated and added. This gets the version dynamically from environment at build time. So you can uh, have a version manually by uh, declaring the, the variable version equal. You put a number in a string, or otherwise you just use the dynamic here, which was package with this uh, border plate. Otherwise, comment it out on add version and you put your version number. Okay, it's, it's not a colon, it's version equal. So here I put colon, but you understand what I mean. If you get any error anyway, the terminal is going to show you. You come back here and you put equal 0 0.1 and so on. And this one, I have added it, the author, the binding, I have added it manually. And this one was part of the border plate. So this should be the one done in cargo.toml. That's why we used cargo add io3 and we added the extension. leave it like that but if it doesn't work we know that this conf is in cargo.toml so we comment this out so if I get any trouble because of this being present here, and at the same time the other side, I'm just going to do this. Liberus. So we're going to the source folder. There's a Liberus, which has been created. This is the border plate. It's like an example that you get in how to create this Rust function that is going to be exported to Python. So we're being able to use it in Python as a normal import, as a module. There's a Py function and there's a Py module. You see the decorators. So here we use Py3 on the top, which is imported. So everything here was added by default. It is not me. So that's why I use this kind of installation. That's the easiest way to install it. And after you can mimic the boilerplate to go into your the complexity of uh, your functions. So let's add our own little function. So now we're going to be customizing, adding our own function. And that's the one, that's the simple function that we're going to use in Python. We need a decorator. So the Py function decorator. So whichever function you create, you need to put this decorator on top of it. Above the function 
R rest function. So both R rest function to be able to call it from Python. So let's create a function now. Now that we know that we need this uh, decorator, this tells that this is a Python function. And after here, we use the REST syntax. So what is cool with that is that we are going to have the advantage of using the performance of REST, which is very close to the hardware. And uh, we'll be able to use this in Python or very long lasting compute kind of uh, processes. We can uh, delegate that to Rust. So that's the idea behind that. So using LLMs and uh, using Python and everything. You see that you can improve those performances by doing uh, this kind of uh, stuff. And that's a good idea, I believe. So here we have a double cake part, which takes a uh, number, cake part. It's a nice 32, it's going to return a nice 32. The cake part is going to be multiplied by 2. Very easy. We don't need to have a complicate, we just want it to work and understand which components are needed, what do we need to mimic in order to be able to produce this. And that's the purpose of this video. It's not that hard. There is a boilerplate here. My REST extension is the same name as the project name. This is important. So if you want to create everything from scratch, Make sure that this function has the same name. This module name has to be same as the project name, you know, the project that you have created, folder name. My first extension. That's the name here that you have choose, chosen when we have uh, created this project using maturing um, new command. So inside here, you see sum has string. So this is how it is exported to Python. So we're going to use the same uh, concept for double cake part function. gonna cut the virus so that you can see everything so m add function I'm just gonna copy it sum has string that's the function that came with the boilerplate sum has string so we need to put the function in it's gonna return a pi result that's why here it uses okay okay so my rest function, the M ampersand bound pi module. So this is the pi module result that is going to be returned. Okay. Create our rest function for Python use. This is done. So now that we understand the architecture of it, we can uh, implement add our own function. We need the bound, ampersand bound, the reference bound of M of the function, add the function wrap. So wrap by function macro that we're using here. We need the name of our function that we're going to put in. And here is going to take 
the name of the function and m at the end. So we need to put the m. Okay. And the question marks are going to be checking. Okay. And we're going to put the OK at the end. So this is how you're going to add your different functions. You need to use the m add function method and inside you use the macro wrap by function and after you put your function name and the m inside of it takes two parameters so add the syntax in the boilerplate or maybe use list and iterate an iterator so you can think of different ways that you can uh, do that because it's just going to be repeating itself you add more functions by function the decorator you declare the function and the logic is the wrap by function macro and we return the okay let's see what's gonna happen if we uh, try to build so we need to build so before just going into your python code and using it straight away we need to build it so it's going to be added as a dependency so maturing develop that's the building comment and here we see that we have an error can't find the, the cargo.toml so there's an error in how we have defined something in the configurations Let's go back. We have those configuration. The source folder is here. Okay. So we need to build from here. We aren't in the right folder. So we need to be at the root folder of the project where there is cargo.tml and pi project, but here it says that uh, I made an error in the author equal field where I have declared the email address and the, the name of the author. So we need to fix this. Expect the table. So table, which means expected the um, Let me do this. Check. But I think it's something like a dictionary, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to go into the maybe making a dictionary. Because this doesn't work. Keys. So name and email keys. If it says that. In this a dictionary. So let's uh, use the curly braces name. It's going to be creditizens and the email. It's going to be just a string of the email. Curly brace. Let's go and check. We're going to see the whole process. Huh? Uh, okay, Tomel pass, so it wants all to be in uh, one line. It's doing it line by line. I can't play like that with it. That's not a Python file or 
or a rust file it's just a config file so it's gonna read the configs line by line and now we can build it starts downloading so now all the configuration that you have set are gonna be creating this uh, Python module no something wrong yes you see I put wrap pew function it should be wrap pi function okay this is, uh, we're passing through the rust compiler as we can see so pi function but pew function okay Let's go maturing develop again. We have already downloaded some parts, so it should be all right. Yes, look at the wheel. C Python 3.10, setting is terrible, my rest extension. Let's have a little break. We could uh, install it. We could uh, create the module. Please like and subscribe. In the next part, we are going to use it, exploring a bit. So now that we have created that, you see there is a target folder. We go in the target folder. We just check. I see there is a debug folder. I just check uh, what is in. That's the first time that I have used the uh, maturing on Pyro3 examples so there's nothing in the examples let's go back let's check build okay there's the pyre tree different build the target lexicon memo of memo of set libc okay my rest extension incremental I'm just going back. So I have my Python environment. I have the Rust extension, the README. So now we're good. Python project integration. Nano. Let's go for an app.py. So you see the, le the level where I am now. I'm back. I went outside of the folder, the Rust folder. Now we are going to create a simple script in Python to call those, uh, those functions. We're just going to use the one that we have uh, created, but they're both available. So the name, just going to import the name of the folder. We need to import. Oh, there's a typo here. Our okay, now it's good. Our rest extension. So import rest extension. We'll have to, we're gonna define a function main. Main cake. Okay. So here we're gonna give some privilege to uh, the credit citizens people. Cake parts. I'm just gonna create a total cake for credit citizens and uh, use the rest extension the name of the package and we're gonna I'm just gonna check if it is the name of the package it's my rest extension okay rest extension doesn't exist so 
source libraries and here is my rust extension so the same name has the folder where we have put uh, this uh, this libraries the source file and double cake parts cake parts just we're gonna put a number it's gonna multiply it by two because the credits and people need double portions so my rust extension my rust extension here also my rust extension okay and now the function double kick part as we have copied take parts and we're just going to print a message using the f string Creditizens will get double portion of cake. And here we can put total cake for creditizens. Okay, let's finish the script. Initial cake portion. For human not in the metaverse. Cake parts. Okay, we'll have two lines. And now we can uh, maybe end here. Say if main, if name equal, equal main. And we're gonna call the function. We're gonna put a number in the function. Main cake. So two. Everyone's gonna get two functions. So we we expect to get four. Okay. Let's see if our integration have uh, worked. Multiply by two. Let's use Rust code in Python, Python 3, app.py. It won't work if we don't close this, but it's not a Rust file. <laughs> this is a Rust comments, so we need just uh, yeah, to use this one. Okay, now that's a Python file. It's gonna work. Yes, initial kick portion for human. Not in metaverse 2, codizens will get double portion of cake 4. That's cool. Amazing. I like that. That's cool. High potential. That's, uh, that's what comes to my mind now. Okay, so you've seen uh, the different steps, how to use maturing, io3, install Rust, use the baller plate, just modify some uh, configurations, and after that, be able to create your Rust functions, and uh, use those build using the maturing develop command, and after use those in, uh, in Python by just importing that folder, as a, as a module, Python module. Isn't that cool? I hope that you like this video. Please like and subscribe. And uh, see you next time.